Here in Europe, we were the last to receive the original Pokemon Game Boy games. The red and green versions were released in Japan in 1996, North America and Australia got the very slightly revised red and blue in 1998, but it wasn't until 1999 that we got our hands on them. After that, we got them in pretty quick succession. Pokemon Yellow also landed in 1999, and it was quickly followed by Pokemon Stadium on the N64 in 2000. But by then, Gold and Silver were already being released worldwide, so considering we in the UK may not have been waiting for a Pokemon console game for as long as other territories, I remember being pant-wettingly excited at the concept of being able to actually play a 3D Pokemon game at home on my TV. Cause, cause that happened. You see, little did we know that the developers actually had no intention of ever producing a full console version of a main series game at all. At least, not yet, anyway. There'll probably be one on the Switch. You know, it took them 21 f***ing years. Either way, Pokemon Stadium was actually a really fun game, despite the fact that it was predominantly just a battle sim. The big thing for me, though, was the ability to plug in your Game Boy game and see your Pokemon that you'd caught come to life. Rather than an 8-bit black and green sprite, you'd get a full-colour 3D rendering of the pocket monsters from your Game Boy save file. In this video, I'm going to be using my actual Game Boy Yellow from 1999. This is the game I played constantly throughout my adolescence. I loved this game so much that I couldn't bear to delete my save file, so somehow I managed to convince my dad to buy me another copy so I could play it again. And quite frankly, if I were ever going to film this video, now is the time to do it, because sooner or later the battery save in this is going to run flat and my 17-year-old Pokemons will be lost forever. There's no transferring these little guys, so I can only preserve them in video form. As well as being able to play the stadium section of the game, there's also the ability to emulate a Game Boy and play your game through the TV. Now, for someone that never had a Super Game Boy when growing up, in fact, I never had a Super Nintendo at all, this is something amazing. Being able to play my Game Boy game on a TV. But what about the other 1200 original Game Boy games? Do they work too? No. Soz, unless you have one of these things, but I literally bought this today, I've never heard of it before, and I'm struggling to actually get it to work properly, so, well, 11 year old may probably had no chance. But there is something special you can do with Pokemon Yellow, and that is unlocking the Surfing Pikachu minigame, which I'm going to attempt to unlock today. There's a hidden minigame in Pokemon Yellow that can only be obtained through playing Pokemon Stadium. Pikachu, despite being an electric type, can learn Surf, but only if you follow specific steps. Now apparently you're meant to reach round two of the Prime Cup Master Ball division with your Pikachu, although some places say that you need to beat the cup. I've tried both and I still can't really get it to work, so I'm going to have to steal some footage to illustrate how it works. <laughs> Once Pikachu has learned Surf, you need to head to Route 19 to unlock the Pikachu Beach minigame. It's a simple surfing game that scores your moves based on radness. Back in the main Pokemon Stadium game, you can also enter a 3D version of Professor Oak's lab so that you can view your Pokedex in all its polygon prettiness. But to be honest, the actual stadium part isn't the highlight of this game. In fact, in Japan, the game is actually split into two. The original focusing mainly on the stadium battles, and the second was close to what we got in the West. That's not to say the stadium battles aren't fun. You enter a number of different cups with different rules in each in order to become a master trainer. Now, if you haven't played the actual Pokemon Stadium 1 that was released over in Japan, well, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not really worth it compared to the one that we got, because the real appeal of this game was actually the Mario Party-style minigames, which is condescendingly titled Kid Zone here. Plug in four controllers, grab two friends and that one guy you like to see lose so you can give him the f***ed up third party controller and get playing. Mm. 
I'm just thinking, while we've got Pokemon Yellow out, I want to try one more thing. I actually have a full Pokedex in this game. I didn't quite manage it on my own. I got as far as I could using copies of Red and Blue, but eventually ended up using this Exploder GB cheat cartridge. When you complete your Pokedex, there's one last Easter egg that this game has to serve up, and that is a printed certificate. If only I'd had the foresight to use my real name. Oh well, it could have been worse. In which case, we're going to need this bad boy, the Game Boy Printer. Now, I can't actually do this on the N64. In fact, at the time, I wouldn't have been able to do this on a home console at all. At least not in the UK, anyway. Not until the GameCube's Game Boy Player was released five years later. However, in Japan, you would have been able to, as the N64 might not have had the means of playing Game Boy games, but the Super Nintendo, or should I say the Super Famicom, did. In Europe and in the US, we got these. Brace yourself. It's Super Game Boy from Nintendo. Play your Game Boy games on the Super NES in living color. Even choose your own color combinations. Play all 350 Game Boy games. How does that strike you? This is the UK version, which looks exactly the same as this, the Japanese Super Famicom version. But what you may notice, if you have one of these, is that it, there's no link cable port, so no way of plugging it into a printer. Thing is though, Japan actually got a Super Game Boy sequel. This one, the Super Game Boy 2. And despite looking strikingly different, it is actually more or less the same thing, but with a few subtle differences. Game Boy Soft and Super Famicom no yume no kakehashi, Super Game Boy! It may have done the very 90s thing of being see-through, like the clear plastic casing of the Play It Loud Game Boy or the iMac, the clear plastic body of blow-up furniture, or the clear plastic filling of Pamela Anderson's bosom, but there's not really that much difference. It does run a little bit closer to the original hardware, whereas the original Super Game Boy is a little bit faster, and Nintendo added a few more borders, but that's not really a selling point. Crucially, however, they also added a Game Link port to allow things like multiplayer, or to allow the inclusion of peripherals like the Game Boy Printer. Now, this never got released in Europe or the US, which is not that surprising, really, because in 1998, which is when this came out, the N64 had already been on store shelves for over a year. A new Super Nintendo accessory that pretty much did the same job as something that was released four years earlier just wouldn't really sell, and it wouldn't be worth the effort of producing. And it certainly wouldn't have been worth the marketing yen, especially as they would have had to create a new tooling to match the more bulky American version of the Super Game Boy. In the game, we need to fly to Celadon City and go up to the second floor of the Pokemon Tower, where you'll find some of the game developers, and they'll print off a certificate for you. Congratulations, Mike. Well, my, my player's name was Mike. This diploma certifies that you've completed your Pokedex. And would you like me to print it? Yes, I would you like you to print it. Is, is it done? I think it's done. Hmm... Pretty sure it's... Oh, wait, no. Okay, no, it's not done. And there we have it. K well, kind of. Can you even see that? I'll try and make it a little bit more clearer. Yeah, the printer's rubbish. There's not actually any ink in the printer. It works in the same way as a receipt in a shop or a restaurant. It's sort of burnt into the paper. So in theory, the warmer the printer, the darker the print. Maybe I should have popped this on a radiator before I used it. Ah well. There was also a feature that allowed you to print pages of your Pokedex as well, but clearly I'd just be wasting my time with that one. Well, there you have it. After 18 years, I finally have my Pokedex certificate. And it's in the character's name instead of mine. <sighs> and now I can lay the cartridge to rest, for its battery is not long for this world. Perhaps it's a good thing. Maybe I've moved on. Maybe I've grown. Maybe I've... 
dare I say it, evolved. To be fair, I think I was a little bit stumbly in this video, but in my defence I was trying out a few new things when filming. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please hit that subscribe button to keep up with all our latest videos.